Hello everyone. I was wanting to show you how I make these porcupine quill earrings and I thought I'd sit here and just chat with you while I'm working on a pair. These are actual porcupine quills and here let me see if I can get a, a larger one to show you. So this is the part that would be attached to the porcupine, and then this is the sharp spine. My aunt in um, South Dakota sent me these porcupine quills. We're Native American um, from the Choctaw tribe, but my, my uncle is from uh, South Dakota. So they are living there now. And she... When my mom went to visit her, I requested some porcupine quills, and that one's too long. I'm trying to find some that are similar in length. That one's too long. And then I also want to make sure that they have a nice round barrel if it's, um, let me show you, if it's got any kinks or um, imperfections like that, I won't be able to get my needle through it. So these are fairly close, and then I can kind of uh, fudge it a little bit. I can clip the, the black tip down a little bit. I'm going to move these out of my way, though. This video um, will probably be a little bit long and rambly. Typically, I don't make <laughs> videos like that. You usually have just something to say and, and get it over with. And you might hear the dishwasher and you might hear um, my uh, washer or dryer going on. I'm doing housework while the kids are at school. Okay, and that pair of scissors is not my favorite. So let me see, I'm just using some wildfire uh, beading wire here, well, actually it's beading thread. Okay, the older I get, the harder it is to see, <laughs> to see these things. Oh, and you know what I realized? I did not get out any earrings, I didn't get out any of the earring backs, just a minute. Okay, I think I have everything. So the first thing I like to do is get my things be, oops, wait a second. It's been a while since I've done this. How do I want to do this? Um, Let's select which beads we're going to use first, and then we'll move from there. I think I'm going to do a pair of these green marbled ones, maybe? And I need to find another... This is Jasper, and I just want to find two that look good together. This one's a little dark. I think those two look good. So we'll do those, and then I need to find some of these smaller beads. I'm wondering if you can see okay. Let me zoom in a bit. Okay. Um, oops, sorry, I bumped the camera. Okay, so I have these, and I want to find something that's a little similar, and how many am I going to need of those? One, two, three, so six of them maybe. No, let's just do four. Find. One for each. Over 
And then I need to pick out a couple of these. I think these green seed beads will work out pretty good. So I've threaded my needle. I'm going to pick up. Now I have to think about this because I'm going to go over and through. So which way do I? Okay, first the crimp bead, then the small round bead, then through the earring. And I'm going to pull this down. Do my little knot. I'm going to try and hide the knot um, up in the, the crimp bead if I can. I don't like having exposed knots. Sometimes uh, I can't help it. But I think the whole project just looks neater if the the knot is hidden under this, the crimp bead there. And I think I was able to do that one this time. And I just noticed I did this backwards. Oh well. We'll keep going and I'll have to remember to do it backwards on the next one. So I'm gonna take up some of these white seed beads. You see, yeah, you can see from there. I'm gonna take a couple of those and I'm going to try and catch the, the tail here. Try and catch that tail right in the seed beads. I want to hide it in the, in the project as mu much as I can. Oops. Don't lose it. The string is coming off the hook here. There we go. Once I get it crimped down, it won't be a problem. I just need to um, get all these other components done first. Okay, so I need to make sure that these are all about the same length. And I want to do... Um, these two are the longest, so I'm gonna make sure that I have one on each of those. On, okay, so I have two sets, of, or one set of earrings I want to do a long and a short on one and a long and a short on, an, on the other because if I did two longs and two shorts, the earrings would be off balance. So let me see, can I get this to go? There we go. So I need to cut off just the tip of the end and just the tip of the front. I do like leaving um, the, the brown visible a little bit because to me that oops is what makes it look like a porcupine quill so where did my needle go and then i also like having the the dark portion of the quill facing down now, the porcupine quills are not hollow I was surprised when I first started using them. I thought they would be hollow, but they're much more like a bird's feather. So if you've ever seen um, a bird's feather or a quill, uh, it it's kind of hollow in the middle, but it has, oops, and I missed a spot. Um, it has like a membrane on the inside. So the same thing, it's the same thing with the porcupine quill, and I realized I forgot to put my stopper bead on. Boy, that dishwasher is just being noisy today. So I like to have this stopper bead so that it kind of covers just the, the very end of the porcupine quill. It's much easier to go through the second time.
So I was right. I'm trying to think <laughs> how my pattern goes. I use some of the seed beads and then some of the jasper and then the porcupine quill. And this is just a, a pattern that I kind of made up on my own. Usually my patterns do have some significance. Um, when I was making uh, the la the beaded collars, they're called beaded collars, but they look like lace. Um, the, the numbers of, or, I'll have to show you one of these times, but the, the pattern I was using of how many beads to put where was, was significant based on uh, our family. So I was working a lot in odd numbers. My mom, well, my grandparents had five girls, so I used the five beads and then I have seven kids. So I was using five and sevens, and then I continued with odd numbers. And so that kind of became part of my signature of how I was doing my, my beading art. I think when I switch over to do the the next earring, I'll change the, the camera angle and maybe bring it in a little closer so you can see more of what I'm doing, because I'm not sure if you can really see. Then again, I'm not sure how interesting this is for, for everyone, but this is what I'm working on today, so I thought I'd go ahead and film it. I'm just trying to think of a way to... Here, I know what I'll do. I was trying to think of a way I could get another knot in here just to make sure it's super secure, but like I said, I don't like having my knots visible, so I have to hide them within the, the larger seed beads. The porcupine quills, they you would think that they would be strong like bone, but they're actually pretty fragile, uh, like a feather. And so far, I haven't been poked or injured by them at all. And I think it's just because um, this is such a quiet, kind of almost meditative time when I'm doing the beading. It's just, I, I like doing this quiet artwork. And, okay, I need to get better scissors because those scissors are going to annoy me. Okay, and then I'm just going to fluff it out a bit, make sure everything is pretty evenly spaced. And then there's the finished earring made with genuine porcupine quills. So that's one down. Let me see if I can zoom in the camera a bit so that you can see a little better. All right, I don't know if that makes it better or not. And I still didn't get the better scissors. I'm still working with these <laughs> horrible scissors. Let me clip off the little 
ends of the porcupine quill here so that I don't have to stop later. You can actually feel the little barbs here on the porcupine quill. It's really interesting. There's actually other ways you can use the porcupine quills. I'm here I'm using them more like a bead. There's some ways that you can use it more like um, like a wrapping technique and my thread's getting all tangled and I haven't tried that way yet. I have the dye to dye the porcupine quills and I have um, some patterns that I've thought I might like to try. But like I said, I just haven't done that yet. I made a set of earrings for each of my aunts to wear. My, my mom and I like to go do the, um, the Choctaw gatherings. Where did my sample go? There it is. Okay. I think I have that backwards. Last year, my mom and I in the, when was that, was that the springtime? My mom and I made all of um, the traditional regalia for me and my, um, my daughter. So we had about three different dresses that, that we worked on. Because there was a gathering, a Choctaw gathering I think I did that differently last time. Oops. <laughs> String got tangled up. I think these uh, arts are so important to to keep keep up the tradition and and you know have future generations learning how to do some of these arts. I need to go get a new pair of scissors because these scissors didn't do it. That's better. Where did the other one go? So that's, you know, it's difficult to get the, the needle through the, the um, porcupine quill's membrane there without damaging the, the quill.
Now most of the time I think my ice side is pretty great and then I start doing beading and I can't see the teeny tiny holes. <laughs> I think it's difficult. Let me double check that I've got this all counted out correctly. Like I said, um, the the pattern is pretty personal. Every bead artist is going to have something different that they kind of use as their go-to. Before I started filming, I was trying to get my camera set up, <laughs> and as I was uh, trying to get the tripod situated over the my table here, the my phone fell and hit hit the beads, and everything just went bouncing off like popcorn. It was uh, it was fun picking up all the little teeny tiny seed beads. <laughs> Beating is a lesson in patience, especially when you make mistakes and make your life harder on yourself. Oh, oops. Speaking of mistakes. See, I want these two seed beads on each side. I want those to be separate until it comes up here through the crimp bead and through the, the decorative bead. Okay, focus, Jen. You can do it. Notice that I'm being very quiet, but I'm I'm concentrating on on this. Let me know down below. Do you get quiet when you when you craft, or are you more chatty? <laughs> I'm going to try and hide another knot right there. I don't know if any of you know this, but um, a long time ago, like a, <laughs> a whole lifetime ago, um, I was an EMT and we did, one of the trainings we did was high angle rope rescue so that we could uh, save people in case of I don't know, emergencies and where there would be ropes involved and we had to like repel off buildings and stuff. Anyway, the first thing my instructor said is if you're bad at tying knots, tie a lot of them <laughs> because you're going to be dangling off the side of a building. Um, so that was funny. That always makes me think of it. Every time I tie a knot, I think, well, if you're bad at it, tie a lot of them because if one fails, you'll have a backup. And there's the second one done. Let me put it on a backing so you can see. So there they are finished. I think they turned out really pretty. So here they are up close. This is another set that I made. And it's got more of like orange stones and browns. And then this one's more of the greens. And then here's a porcupine quill up close. 
you can actually see like where it's attached to the porcupine and then here's the quill. So anyway, that's my process of making these porcupine quill earrings. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. I probably will list a few of these in my Etsy shop um, just because Thanksgiving's coming up and I think that these would make great um, accessories to wear um, for Thanksgiving or possibly as Christmas gifts. So um, I'll leave a link for that below. And if you like my channel, please consider subscribing to it. I do a lot of fun crafts and thrift hauls and grocery hauls and things like that. And I'll talk to you again soon.